welcome 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 to another episode of real estate real life real talk and real live with damon the agent i am so greatly appreciative that you all are here today and you know what i'm saying we want to get right into our topic so this week's topic is going to be about credit repair and i also have a business spotlight with jason padmore of jfp express and then also i'm going to be talking about customer service so without further ado um let me begin of course today is friday september the 23rd 2022 all right so i'm going to talk about credit repair briefly on some things that you the consumer can do to help yourself improve your credit credit is a big issue here in the united states and mainly because credit determines everything like even though people have cash to do things people still want to verify through your credit that you are a worthy person because you pay your bills on time but there are people who throughout the course of life things have happened and you know sometimes your credit takes a dip and one thing about credit is credit is your past seven years so even though your credit may be up now it can be down tomorrow and even though it's down today it can be up tomorrow so let's begin the first thing when it pertains to credit is many people that i know who um have credit issues or a credit challenge most of them for some reason or not do not check their credit scores a lot of times when i speak to people excuse me when i speak to people and i ask them what is your credit score a lot of times people say they do not know now i always found through years of experience that most people who do not know they have what their credit score are usually have bad credit most people who have good credit they usually know their credit scores now another thing about credit is a lot of times people tend to tell me that um a lot of times people tend to tell me that they go through credit karma which is a free app and a free website that normally gives people their credit score and it normally gives it to them from one or two bureaus but like i told someone credit karma is really there to boost people's self-esteem it's really there to boost people's confidence um credit karma also is in relations with a lot of companies to get people to apply for mortgages and apply for credit cards through them that's why a lot of times when people are on credit karma they can actually see on the side with the ads and everything saying oh if you get a credit card with us your balance will be this amount or you you can transfer your balance from credit cards to them so credit karma is really basically to help people boost their self-esteem when it pertains to their credit your fico score and your credit scores are normally never the same as credit karma there are three credit bureaus there's equifax there's transunion and there's experian those are the three credit bureaus that most people go to when they're trying to find out someone's credit score for example if you go purchase a car if you apply for a credit card you know um and even when you apply for a mortgage those are the three credit bureaus that are used in 99 percent of the cases um what well, people do, who do not who do not know their credit score i strongly first su suggest for them to pull all three of their credit reports from all three bureaus and the reason why i say that is because in many cases you may have something on one report that's not on the other reports so you want to see what others are seeing because when you do go out to apply for things in some cases like if you go apply for a credit i mean apply for a car or a credit card they may randomly pick any of the three bureaus that i just named um equifax experian and transunion and they will look on that one report to determine whether or not that you're credit worthy or not now first pull your credit reports and also make sure that you get your credit score the reason why i say this is because if you pull your credit report and you get your scores the scores are going to cost you some money roughly around ten dollars each which is a total of thirty dollars most people spend more than that when they go out to drink when they go out to eat when they buy shoes you know in a week time just eating out most people spend more than that just on everyday activities so why not take the time to make an investment in yourself to help you put yourself in a better position down the line 
when it pertains to you and your future and your credit. So first, pull all three credit bureaus and pull your report and also make sure that you get your credit scores. And then once you do that, look on all three reports. This is a trick that I always like to tell people who um, are dealing with credit issues. If you have anything on your credit report that is over two years old, challenge it. The reason why I say that is from my own personal experience, I don't know if many of you will recall back when Nextel was real popular and they had the chirp chirp on the phones and everything. Well, I remember when they switched over to Sprint. This was probably like about, I don't know, 15 years ago. And something popped up on my credit report. Now, between you and I, it was really mine, but it was like about four or five years old. I went on there and I challenged everything that was over two years old. When I did so, what the credit bureaus do is they send stuff to whoever your creditor is who put things on your report. Those creditors have exactly 30 days to respond to the credit bureau. If they do not respond in 30 days, the credit bureau will automatically take those items off your report, even if it's yours. They have 30 days. So a lot of times when people, if you pull your own credit reports, you see issues on your credit reports that are over two years old, I would challenge all of them. Because at the time when I did that, there were like about 11 items. And I kid you not, about seven or eight of those items came off and about out of the seven or eight items, about half of them were actually mine. But because I felt like they were outdated, because to me, if it's a couple of years and stuff, that's a long time. And then the way the credit system works is this. Like I mentioned before, they look at your credit for the past seven years, 10 years when it pertains to some things. So let's say hypothetically you have something on your credit report that is five years old. That means you really got two more years before it comes off because they have to drop it off your credit report seven years from the date of last reported. That's why if you ever look at your credit reports and you'll see that they keep updating stuff every month, your credit cards are updated every month because your credit is going to stay on your credit report until seven years from the date of last reported by the creditor. But if it's over two years old, I strongly suggest that you challenge anything that's on your credit report. Now, these things may seem tedious because, you know what I'm saying, it requires a little effort and a little work, but it's well worth it, especially if it's going to boost your credit scores 30, 40, 50 points, especially for those who have a lot of items on their credit report. There are a lot of credit um, repair companies out here. Many of them are good. Some of them are bogus. OK, um, I actually work with a credit repair company and I'm going to actually bring them on next week to have them talk to you also about the um, ins and out about credit. But I am just sharing this information for those people who don't have the funds to deal with a credit repair company, who are trying to increase their credit scores, who have items on their credit reports and who, you know, what I'm saying are basically just know that, OK, if I do the littlest things, my score is going to increase because trust and believe. That if you do these items, I'm not saying everything's going to come off your report, but some things will come off your report. So, again, let's retract. So, first of all, order all three credit reports from each bureau, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. Second, make sure that you get your credit score with all of those, okay? Because you really want to get your credit score to see what your actual score scores are, not what is on credit comma because again credit comma score is there to boost people's self-esteem if you go apply for a credit card or go get a car they're going to tell you something totally different than what you see on credit comma after you do that you see anything on your report that's over two years old you challenge those with the actual credit bureaus and then you have to wait because like i said they give the the people 30 days to um respond you're going to get something probably like in about 40, 45 days. So about a month and a half later, you're going to get something telling you whether the people said that it was yours or whether those items were dropped off your report. Now, those are ways to help you increase your credit score on top of paying your bills on time. You know, that's the key. That's number one thing. Pay your bills on time, especially if you have the money. Do not just take the time and just, um, you know, take the money 
that you have and, and neglect your bills because paying bills on time is very crucial and critical. And that is the reason why people tend to look at your credit report, um, especially when people are trying to rent properties, when they're trying to do things. Um, they're looking to see your history as far as payments. Sometimes people say, oh, I got the money for the security deposit. I can pay this and everything. But five years ago, you couldn't pay. And that's what they're trying to see. They're trying to see if you have a history of paying on time or if you have a history of being delinquent when it pertains to payment. And because of that, credits are easily affected. Your credit score can drop down to marvel like that, 25 points. But it's going to take you longer than a day to get your credit back up 25 points. So these are little tidbits to help you to increase your credit score. So all you have to do is take the time, okay? It is simple. If you, um, there, the, all three bureaus, again, are TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. I strongly recommend to call them and everything. If you Google them, call, get the number and call them. You can go online. The only trick about going online is when you go to one website, they're trying to sell you scores for the other two. And the, and the actual scores that they're giving you are not from the actual bureau. They're doing a calculation of what it possibly could be like. But everybody's trying to make money these days, so they're trying to sell you those things. So I will call all three credit bureaus because they're going to ask you personal information, such as your Social Security, um, at street addresses, uh, you know, I don't remember height, you know what I'm saying? I mean, no, not height, but I'm just using that for an exaggeration. But they're going to ask you personal information that only you should know. And then they're going to char charge you through a credit card and then they're going to mail it to you. Once you get that in the mail and they also have options of you getting it via email because the way things are today. Um, once you get it, it's your job to look at them, verify things and then to act accordingly. And once you do so, give them time enough to respond. And again, these little tidbits will help you over time to do that. And I would strongly also suggest that to look at your credit scores every month. Most people who have good credit, they check their credit scores at least once a month, no less than once a quarter. They don't, they don't go past three months without checking their credit scores because anything can happen. And then today in the world that we live in with cybersecurity and all these identity thefts and scammers, you want to put, you want to check your credit scores often. And also on your credit reports you can put a freeze on it so make sure that no one is just randomly using your information i have a freeze on mine i actually applied for something last week and i forgot i had the freeze on mine and then they had to actually call me and ask me personal questions because i had a freeze on my credit reports and i completely forgot about it and i would strongly suggest that you all do that as well when you call in and you get your reports to also take the time to put a freeze on it because there's, there is a lot of scamming going on. There's a lot of identity thefts. So to protect yourself, those are ways that you can help to also secure your credit because people steal your information. Next thing you know, they're applying for credits and everything, and then they're messing up your credit and messing up your identity. So please take all of those things into consideration. So I'm going to be back with the business spotlight, Jason Padmore. So give me a second. I'll be right back. Jason. What's up, brother? I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. You can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you clear, man. Loud and clear, man. It looked like you just got finished working out. Nah, actually, you know, got finished stretching. I don't work out anymore. My back is busted. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm, you can work out. But let me first introduce you, everyone. This is Jason Padmore, owner and operator of JFP Express Carrier and... You know, this is the man, you know. First of all, Jason, tell us what is your company and what do you what do you all have to offer people? Um the name of my company is JFP Express. We are a courier transport company. We can transport anything you need on the northeast 
as well as the southern region. Um, out of town, in town, we can do it all. We so can. when you say transport anything, are you referring to like medical antiques? Um, that's initially what it started as, but you know, people <laughs> they started asking me to transport any and everything, so I do it all now. Okay, okay, that's good, man. That's good, you know what I'm saying? Um, so what how long has your company been um operating? Uh we legally it's been operating since 2018. Mm -hmm. So about a little four years? Yeah. And what area are you primary in now? You say on the East Coast. CMV or? area primarily. Every single day we work on that um, in those areas. I work with a lot of investors moving staging equipment for people that's working on selling their homes or investors were looking to sell their homes. They, you know, hired me to destage and restage and transport the equipment from house to house. Okay. So um, you take the staging furniture and stuff out of one property and, and I guess put it in storage or take it to another house? Yes. Exactly what I do. Okay. Um, what else I was going to ask you? Trying to find the information real quick. You can find me on Yelp, Google, um, my website. You put it on the left hand side of the screen, jfpexpress.com. As soon as you put in a, um, a request, someone will contact you. Okay. Yeah. So basically, um, this company, uh, I mean, I know you'll do like a lot of that. You say you did, you started with medical equipment? Yeah. Medical transport. Okay. Um, medical equipment transport from hospital to hospital we do that as well okay from how so you'll deal with hospital you deal with real yes. estate you'll deal with um everything absolutely and also so besides the website let me check out something real quick i wanted to read up on it Okay, you, you offer a wide range of logistics services and dealing with pharmaceutical, medical appliances, parts, electronics, office material, furniture, clothing, art, and sculptures. Yeah. And you deal with commercial and residential moves? Yes. So what I basically want to do and, you know, what my company, you know, envision is just to have a high end. Mm -hmm. you know red carpet i'll literally bring out the red carpet lay it down i protect everything and you know give that a one customer service do you all do small jobs we do small jobs as well okay. okay you know i've right now with the small jobs it's even you know better for us because you know a lot of my staff after COVID, a lot of people don't want to work yeah, I don't so, know. you know, smaller is better right now at the moment to rebuild back up. Yeah, I think a lot of people didn't want to work because they were getting free money and free, free money. everything. Yeah, so they 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 was living off that, and um, some people found ways to continue the free hustle, and then mm -hmm. some people also found ways to, I guess, get the PPP loan and everything. So, I mean, but PPP loan was good for businesses such as yourselves and other businesses as well, too. But, um, you know, but yeah, so basically this company and everything, so people can call you if they want to have stuff move out of their apartment, for example. Yeah, absolutely. And their That's house. what I'm focusing on right now, you know, um, transporting people from their, you know, apartment, houses, first time home buyers, you know, people that's leaving out there out of their, you know, storage unit, storage yeah. pickup, furniture pickups. I do, I, you know, assemble, desemble, yeah. we do it all. Okay, yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm happy for you, man, especially any company and stuff. Um, your website is one way, but tell us anything else. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, besides this, what is your background and stuff? Where are you from? Like, where did you grow up? Uh, 
I'm originally from New York. I came out here in 05 to attend uh, Morgan State. Mm-hmm. Um, went to school for business. After that, you know, went into the corporate world, did HR uh, for a while. Always, you know, I, I'm always good at sales. So I went, started working at the car dealership, and that's what led me into the logistics side. Okay. Um, one of my customers, he came in and he was looking for one of those pro masters. Mm-hmm. It's a cargo van. It's something like the postal service, you know, used for transports. Mm-hmm. And I asked him, you know, a couple of times, like, well, why do you need this vehicle? What is it for? Mm-hmm. And he was telling me, you know, he, you know, works in DC area. He do a lot of transports for the college students. And when I was looking at his income year to date, it was February and his year to date was already 28,000. I was like, well, this is something I should get into. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. Right. Yeah, I get it. He said, you serious? I said, yeah, I'm, I'm serious. If you're making, you know, a quarter million a year, I'm, I'm going to look into something like that and see what I can do to grow. And, you know, I wasn't getting along with my managers at the dealership. So I was like, well, I imagine I'm going back working for myself. You I know, I've always was entrepreneur at heart. Right. You know, and that was just one step for me to just go get at it. And yeah. since I worked there, I got a good deal on the van. Once I got it, they thought I was going to stay. I quit the next day. And oh, wow. You know, business yeah that's how it be sometimes you know when i got into um real estate i um i didn't give a two-week notice either you know what i'm saying <laughs> I, I i wrote them a letter though and i pulled up and i was like this is my i said my last day was i think i came in on a monday i said my last day was friday i said here go y'all letter and stuff and i ain't and they say oh give a two-week notice because if you need to come back but i found no, it's no way to be <laughs> it's it's yeah, definitely no plan B. Most of the times, you know what I'm saying, when you give it to me, no, you ain't going back or they they not gonna hire you anyway if you quit on them. You know what I'm saying? So and when they want to fire you, they they're not giving you a two-week notice. So basically, I was like, Yeah. So sometimes with the entrepreneurship, you have to take that leap leap of faith because the one thing that I did was I know that what I was working and getting similar to you, I was I was getting paid okay, but I wasn't really making no money. And I remember that I said to myself, I said, if I work just as hard for myself as I do for them, yeah. I will make at least what they are giving me. That's what I always yeah. say. And that's always been true. You know what I'm saying? I mean, for yourself, a lot of times if you can find something where you can profitable and you can grind and stuff, you can um, basically, you know what I'm saying, make money. There's a million ways to make money. These exactly. Days. You know, and I just started with this new... Um business a couple weeks ago as well you know and this is you mean the bike yeah the e-bikes okay you know yeah that's good you own a couple of them i own 120 of those oh wow throughout the city and stuff and you put the only one in the city with the e-bikes you know it's a partnership agreement you know since i had the insurance for my regular business i just it help me with this business because I have the cargo insurance and I have the, you know, liability insurance up to a million dollars in general aggregate as well as two million. So when I had all the credentials for my business, I send that over to them and say, look, I'm in the whole logistics industry. This is something I can do. And I'm providing, you know, opportunity for people that want to work. So great, man. That's great. Cause you know what I'm saying? I mean, I see this, those e-bikes everywhere. Yeah, and what I look at is whatever I get into is passive income now. So this is passive income. So whoever you know use the app, use their credit card, ride the bike wherever they want to ride it. As soon as they're done, they take a picture, it locks up, and that's it. And I have an app on my phone to let you know if it's you know where is it located it's a gps sensor inside of every one of them and that's good for me you know yeah that's great man that's a great way to do it and that's the thing and it, and it started with 
you branching out and then you know you're doing your express thing and you're doing that now and then it's going to turn into something else and again like you said passive income um and multiple streams of income that's the way to be in order to furnish and and provide the lifestyle that you want to have so that's good man i'm proud of you when it pertains to that um you know so how can people get in contact with you or do they need to go to your website if they wanted to contact um, you? um they can go to my website um www wjfpexpress.com my email is info at jfpexpress.com um and if you want to get direct you know you can call my cell phone i'm always available text at 240-605-1234 so let's see just let me know yeah man you you sound like you're a good inspiration for many and um i want people to be able to reach out to you if they have any questions or concerns about uh you know the logistics of you doing the carrier work for them and and then also with the with the with the bikes with the e-bikes and stuff you know uh people that's good man you know what i'm saying you own 120 something so that's very good i wish you the best of luck with those like i said i see those things scattered everywhere i see them even in alleys uh, yeah, that's the, you know, it's always a negative to it as well. You know, sometimes people want to take them, put them inside their house, you know, put them in different areas, vandalize them, you know, but that comes with the game. Let me ask a question. If a person takes, if they rent it for like, let's say three hours, and then they take it inside their house, and you got the app and everything, what do you do? Do you basically wait until like a couple of days or something to see if they're going to return it? Or do you just see what's going on? Because they have to actually, it won't it won't start back up unless they run it again, correct? Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, and that's the, um, people do insane stuff. Like I was telling someone, it start, you have to, but I can see where it's located. So if, I want, I have the right document. I can call the police and say, look, my bike is in here. Okay. You know? And they say, hey, it's located in here. You know, bring it out. Mm -hmm. It's just like an Apple, you know, iPhone, when you do the phone locator. Mm -hmm. But it's still, you can't do anything if it's an apartment building. Right. If you don't know, you know, but single family house, townhouse, you can do that, but yeah I, will no probably, yeah I will probably just um give it time because you got a hundred and something to be concerned about so if the other ones are still making money i mean if that one disappear off you know for like a week or so then mm -hmm. i'll probably be like you know let me what's going on you know but and i seen one of my bikes in new york i'm like oh my god how to get up there <laughs> i don't even know that's another story um i was talking to my friend she you know, commutes back and forth to work uh, from Baltimore to DC. From the, you know, and mm -hmm. she said she was on a train, and this <laughs> this brother took one of the bikes from DC and brought it to Baltimore. So I'm like, oh, man, wow. it's not a it's a normal zone. Yeah, and, you gotta have insurance on them. So basically, the insurance I believe will cover any theft because that's basically what it is. It's theft. If we go from sure. The DMV to New York. I'm not going up to New York to get it unless that bike is making me over. Like, let's say I have limited bike. You got a hundred or something. Let's say I have five bikes and each bike is making me over a certain amount per day. Then I might take a trip on a weekend because I know people in New York anyway, and I know you're from New York, so yeah. you know. So that's the only way I'm. I'm gonna be going up there to get my bike, but then it, at, at the same time I'm gonna be like, is it worth it? Uh, let me just report this stolen. You know what I'm saying? It might be up in a in the projects in the hood somewhere i go up there that joint in the in the hood it's about yeah. 50 outside i'm like hey, that bike ain't worth <laughs> <laughs> i deal with that every single day yeah. i'm like but they know me around here they're like All right, this is my man i yeah. tell them it's my bike they're like you know you sure so i'm like it is what it is yeah i feel you man but look man i appreciate you coming on to the show to you know what I'm saying? Do my business spotlight. Um, you know, I'm going to make sure that I put this website back up there for people to reach out to you so they can check out all the services that you have to offer. Um, 
You know what I'm saying, man? And we 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 chop it up, you know what I'm saying, like we always do. We gotta talk about the life in general, just life is going uh, on in life with, with women and kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm <laughs> I need to. Yeah, man. Look, we all need to, you know what I'm saying, you know, have some brothers to talk to to you know what I'm saying? Get stuff off our chest and then, you know what I'm saying? Hold each other accountable for certain things too. You know, life ain't easy, man. That's why I was trying to tell you. Definitely not. Life is not easy. Sometimes people may look on TV or look on social media and they think everything gravy because people are posting the best aspect of their life. But everybody at some point in time is going to go through it some way, somehow with someone. So sometimes some people can handle it different than others, but we all need somebody to lean on. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. So yeah, we definitely gonna chop it up, but I appreciate you coming on. And then also, real quick, you were talking about um, when you were at the car dealership and you was a good salesperson. My next topic I'm about to talk about is gonna be about customer service. So um, I know salespeople, they're real good customer service when they try and get you to buy them cars and stuff. You know, oh, lately, yeah, by all lately, means. Lately, uh, the, the cars have went up in value so much because of the shortage, especially since the pandemic, yeah. that now they, they boost their prices and stuff like that. So um, I got I got like my grown kids and it seemed like all I'm trying to get a car right now. And I, I didn't got one of my daughters a car this weekend. Um, most likely I'm going to be trying to get my other daughter a car. My son's trying to get a car. My other daughter, you know what I'm saying? It's like, man, it's like. And I'm trying to help them out as a father for real because when I was their age, ain't nobody helped me get nothing. Yeah, it was one guy that he did help me later on, and he was a real good guy. Named Mr. Slade, I never forget him. But I'm talking about my family. Ain't nobody helped me in my family, so um, so I'm just trying to help them out. But customers yeah. sometimes people don't know. You know, I don't take it. You know, serious. You know, yeah. sometimes people just don't know. You yeah. Know. Yeah, um, we as people grew up in some type of you know poverty situations. I'm not saying you have, but it could be the mindset of growing up in a whole distress mental of not being financially literate to do certain things as buying stuff. And that's what I notice when I have certain customers, they you know they just don't know, mm -hmm. and you know. That's why I chose to get out because I don't want to take advantage of people that don't know. Right. And that's good, though. And, and, and your customer service, your good customer service led to the opportunity you meeting that person and them sharing mm -hmm. things with you. Because if you had bad customer service or you, if you weren't a, a, a person that, you know, what I'm saying, um, you know, a good person, then I'm sure they probably wouldn't have shared a lot of stuff with you and stuff. But again, that's good, man. So, again, like I said, I'm going to leave your website right there. And then I'm also going to be coming back on talking about customer service. And then you and I, we're going to chop it up soon. I'm going to call you when the podcast is over, man. And I wish you much success, man. You have a great day and I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Appreciate you, brother. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. All right, that was Jason Padmore with JFP Express. Please be sure to check out his website, jfpexpress.com. And if you need to email him, it's info at jfpexpress.com. He's a good guy and his business, you know what I'm saying, I'm sure can help any and everyone when it pertains to logistics of things, um, moving things, residential or commercial, carrier, and he also has the e-bikes and stuff like that. So if you're trying to rent some e-bikes and everything. Um, you all can hit him up for that. Well, my next topic is going to be on customer service. As you will briefly heard me speak with when it pertains to um, when it was when I was just talking to Jason was about customer service. Now, there are different levels to customer service that I want to talk about. And the reason why I want to talk about customer service is because they're good customer service and it's bad customer service. So first, let me talk about the good customer service. There are many people out here in the world that are working, whether it is being a waiter, waitress, working in a hotel, um, 
doing ride share, um, working in a restaurant. These people, they're really, I mean, some people, they're very genuine. And sometimes, you know what I'm saying, they, 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 they do so much to the point where sometimes they're taken advantage of. And when I say that, meaning like sometimes people may go into restaurants and you're being very demanding. You know, you want stuff right now because we live in a microwave generation as far as society is concerned. Everybody wants stuff instantly, instantly. They want everything instant. You can go somewhere, people doing their best, but then people, some customers have bad attitudes. They're just rude. They're disrespectful. You know, they want to talk to people any type of way because of the fact that that's the job. And I'm going to be honest with you. The customer is not always right. That's an old saying that was used, you know what I'm saying, to make most people who were working to have a better work ethic and also a better attitude towards customers. But nowadays, the customer is not always right. Sometimes the customer is downright rude. Sometimes the customer is disrespectful. Sometimes the customer's are overbearing they ask for too much and then on top of that they don't even tip you can go to a restaurant people can order all these food and they figure because the bill came up to 150 dollars that they the waiters should get their tip from that when no they don't because most waiters waitresses and waiters they get paid like next to nothing you know what i'm saying they get like what like three five dollars i don't even know what what it is these days they don't get paid a lot they rely strongly on tips to survive and the customer service that the good people give it seems like they get the bad treatment you know what i'm saying from the rudest and and, and 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 worst customers and many of them don't deserve that because like i said many of them are trying to work to support their family and stuff and on top of that put yourself in their shoes if that was you and if you say oh that would never be me and stuff you never know where life would take you because trust and believe you never know if you will be at your lowest low and you have to take a job doing what they do but at the same time pretend like if that was your your son or your daughter or your mother or your aunt or your uncle or your grandparents anybody that you strongly care for what if that was you i mean what if what if that was them and they were getting mistreated by someone you would not like that. And that happens so often out here when it pertains to people who are dealing with, you know, services, the people and stuff. They get treated so rudely by people that sometimes it's unbelievable how people can be so demanding from strangers. You don't know strangers, but you're demanding, you know, like like even with that throughout the country, there's a shortage on bus drivers. And um, sometimes when buses are showing up late. Um, it's understandable for parents to be upset because they've been waiting. You know, their kids are waiting. Everyone is waiting. But a lot of times it's not the bus driver's fault. You got to talk to the county, to the school board. It's their fault. They don't have enough people. You can't blame one bus driver who has a route and, ha and they have to pick up extra people. And because they have to pick up extra people, it's going to make them become later and stuff just to ensure that everyone is getting picked up. But then you have some parents who will complain and fuss at that bus driver like that bus driver could have did something different when truth be told that parent could have drove and took their kid to school anyway because as long as you're waiting and everything you could have took your kid but see the point i'm making is that the good people who are giving a good customer service out here are get, getting treated by the getting treated badly by the by people and people don't have any compassion these days now Let's talk about the bad customer service. There are people out here who do give bad customer service. There are some people out here who overcharge for their services or their products and they under deliver. They give the, the worst and the worst and everything. You know, I've known many people who would charge for, um, let's say, let's say they're selling some, let me say, uh, I don't know, an iPhone case. Let's say they're selling these. And they throw some stuff on their um, cases and then they they go sell it and they want twenty dollars per per case. And, you know, to yourself, twenty dollars is too much because, you know, you can get a regular case like this for ten dollars. But because they got all the stuff and glitter on it, you're trying to support them. Twenty dollars. So let's say you 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 get it and then you go around the corner and then some of the stuff come off and you come back. Now they want to fuss at you and say, oh, the product sold as is. That ain't my fault. I don't know what you did and stuff. See, we have a lot of people out here who provide bad customer service too. 
overcharge for their stuff and they under deliver when it pertains to customer service. But we have to know the difference in everything. You know, a lot of times people who are given a bad customer service, they want everyone to support them, but they don't support anyone. And they overcharge for their products and everything, but they don't deliver, you know, good, great customer service. I feel like if you overcharge, you need to be delivering the best customer service ever. But the problem is people overcharge and then they feel entitled like people are supposed to support them. Then when people don't support them, they will say support black businesses, for example. But then at the same time, the black businesses is giving the worst customer service and overcharging for the products. If you want people to support you when you're overcharging, you should give the best customer service ever. And the problem is people don't seem to know to distinguish between the difference. And then when we go out here in the world, we see like for me, when I go out here, I go somewhere and I'll see someone who's working as a waitress or a hostess somewhere and they're being fussed at and cussed at because they're not moving quick enough or because they're not giving somebody what they want. Then I'll see somebody else who overcharging and then mad because ain't nobody supporting them, but they have the worst attitude. See, in all of this, your attitude determines your altitude, how high you will go. How high you will go a lot of times doesn't have to deal with the, the product that being sold. It doesn't always have to deal with the place where you work. It has to do with your attitude in a lot of things. You know, doors open when you have a grateful and humble attitude. Just like when I was just on the phone with um, Jason Padmore, and he was talking about he was working at the dealership and he made a connection with someone at the dealership. It's because he had a great attitude and gave good customer service. And the same goes for a lot of times. People want to help people and do business with people that they like and trust, you know. But when it pertains to people who are rude, disrespectful, karma is going to come for you in one way or another, whether you realize it or not. It always does. I mean, I ain't got to be the one to say, you know, the universe, you know, dictates all. That's why some people have the worst of luck. You know, you ever met a person and they can't seem to catch a break and they always have bad luck. And they, oh, I have, you know, you know why they have it? Some, some of them, because of the way they treated people. You know, nothing good is going to come to you when you mistreat people, period. I don't care who it is, whether it's an elderly person, whether it's a little kid, whether it's a stranger. The problem is in this world today, there's so many people who walk around with a chip on their shoulder, you know, because of their insecurities. They got things going on eternally. So, you know, you can go somewhere and you can walk into a place and people will look at you funny just because you walked in the place because they hate knowing, you You know what I'm saying? Because of what's going on inside of them. And that's just the way the world is today and stuff. So again, when it pertains to, you know, customers and it pertains to services, I think we also treat people the way that we want to be treated. But unfortunately, people don't seem to know that that resonates and how it resonates because people continue to do the same things that they continue to do, but yet they keep getting the same results and wonder why. That's called insanity to expect something different, but to keep doing the same thing. But people sometimes do not never take a look at themselves. They don't look in the mirror. They look at everyone else. They criticize everybody else. They judge men for everyone else. They always have something to say about everyone else, but they never take a look at themselves. And that's why sometimes some people are excelling and some people are moving backwards. It sometimes have to do with your attitude, how you are. And again, when it pertains to the customer service and what's going on with people and what's going on with the services, it's not always about the services. A lot of times it's about you. It's about them. You know, even in the world of real estate, a person such as myself may sell many houses, but I also say, but it ain't always about the house. It's about the people. It's also about, you know what I'm saying, servicing the people about, you know what I'm saying, the person. Because that's what it is. You can, it, things are always much bigger than what it is. It's always much bigger than what it is. It's always something that lies beneath and lies behind. It's always a bigger picture. But it's your viewpoint on things and it's your mindset on things. 
And unfortunately, the mindset of so many individuals nowadays is so selfish. It's selfish because everybody feels like it's about them. I don't care where you go. You can go into a restaurant and they can and it can be a waiting list and there can be 10 people in it. And of course, some people are going to come in and turn around because they don't want to wait. Some people are going to go in there and wait. And when they wait five, 10 minutes, they're going to start complaining because everybody thinks it's always about them. Sometimes you ever go anywhere and people say, where all these people come from? Why you ain't ask yourself where you come from? Because you people, you there too. But see, people think it's all about them. And again, until people start to change their mindset, they would never change their circumstances or situations. Unfortunately, everything starts with the mind. You know, where we are today, how we live today, all started with a thought and things that we've done in the past that brought us to where we are today. All thought about with a thought and decisions that we have made. And a lot of decisions that we have made for ourselves, in many cases, they have been good for people. But in many cases, they have been bad for people. But when are people going to take a look at themselves to see exactly what they're doing is either right or what they're doing is either wrong? I think sometimes people don't take the time to do that because people don't want to you know, be held accountable and people don't like correction, unfortunately. But it says in the Bible that the, the uh, food that despise, I mean, there's a, only a food despise correction. And there's many foods out here in the world. Trust and believe there's many foods out here. That's why every day there is something crazy going on. Every day, something crazy going on. Unbelievable. It's so much chaos and confusion in the world today. Now, how can that change? Again, it all changes with you. It all changes with you making a decision. It all changes with you changing your mindset. Read more. But the problem with reading is because of video, a lot of people don't like to read. You understand? But the most successful people in the world read books. Most people who are making the most money read books. You have to read in order to learn more. All the knowledge and stuff and how to get out of the situations, circumstances where you are, nine times is in a book. Yeah, you have the edited version and stuff, and you can look at stuff on videos and stuff too, but there's so much power in a book. And there's an old saying, if you want to hide something from people, put it in the book. And that's the truth, because most people ain't going to books first. <laughs> they go going to videos. They want to see the videos first. And that's just the way things are, though. But again, everything changes with your mindset. So going back to customer service, they're good customer service. They're bad customer service. They're the people who are out here working hard, doing the best they can, making an honest living. And, they, and, and, and some of them get the worst treatment from people. Please try to be kind to people regardless, especially when you go out. Because here's the thing. You never know if. The people who serving you, someone in your family will have that position in life, whether it's your children or whether it's your grandparents or whether it's even you. You never know where life will going to take you at. Nobody does. You know, we plan, but sometimes the things we plan get altered by this thing called life. So please treat people like you want to be treated yourself. And then there's bad customer service. And again, with bad customer service, I always say, there are people out here who are overcharging for stuff, under delivering for stuff, rude, disrespectful, feel entitled, like, oh, support my business, support my business. But they don't support anyone at all. Never had. But they want somebody to support them. Y'all know who they are. I know who they are. You know, support my business. Support me. Come to my function. Come do this. But they ain't never support you. That's just how people are. We live in a selfish society. So with that being said, I just want you all to take kind of, again to be nice to someone when it pertains to customer service and treat everyone accordingly. Accordingly meaning based off how and who they are. That's how you treat people accordingly. So let me recap today's podcast. First of all, I want to thank you all for coming. Please make sure you always Tune in every Friday at 12 noon. Also, please follow all my social media platforms, especially my YouTube. Um, 
just click on the link below click on it subscribe make sure you hit the notifications button so you can get all and everything that i upload to youtube also follow me on facebook instagram tiktok linkedin twitter i am on all of them as damon the agent and let me recap today okay today we were talking about credit repair ways to improve your credit again like i mentioned before i would strongly suggest everyone to i would strongly suggest everyone to reach out to all three credit bureaus equifax experian and transunion and when you reach out to the three credit bureaus please make sure that you call them pull all three of your reports and also pull all three credit scores when you get those credit scores don't forget look at your reports anything that's been over two years old contest there are spots on there that ask you how you sound it this is not mine i already paid for it etc check all of them or check other and they're going to reach out to them and those people have 30 days to respond back if they do not respond back in 30 days they will drop it off your credit report and it cannot come back on so keep that in mind and then also remember jason padmore was my guest on here today he has jfp express and you all please check out the website so he can see what he can do for you all he specializes in carrier services for commercial and residential he delivered a lot of things from logistics to medical supplies to anything that you need hauled and moved away and on top of that he has an e-cycle and stuff his business also is a wide range of things and he's been in business for a little over four years He's very a nice person, real good when it pertains to customer service, and he's very responsive. So please check out his business and support him because I'm sure that some some of us sometimes we need some stuff moved, small or large, and we don't know who to reach out to. JFPExpress.com, Jason. And then also, I just also talked about customer service. A good customer service and a bad customer service. Good customer services, when you go to these places and people are servicing you, please be polite. Please be nice. Please do not be rude to these people because these people have family. These people are doing their job. These people do not have to take your abuse. These people are human like you. Don't think because they're in a position and you can just try to take advantage and stuff because you want to be a bully. Because that's basically what you're acting like, a bully, when you want to be disrespectful to a waitress or when you want to fuss at a school bus driver or a local salesperson or whatever thing. People don't have to tolerate your mess and you don't know what people are going through. So sometimes people will, you know, turn around and snap and then it will be your fault because everyone goes through things. Please be nice to people when you're out here dealing with the, the public and people are providing a service to you, whether you're at a hotel or anywhere. Please be nice to people because and please tip these people too in, in the industry where they're supposed to be tipped waitresses hotel um doormen and everything tip these people y'all and i'm not talking about a dollar tip them you go to the bar you're gonna tip the bartender and stuff you know what i'm saying whatever you know tip these people for the services that they give to you if they give poor service right okay but if they give good service or a- average service tip these people these people live off tip please do not be selfish to that fact that you don't understand that these people live off tip and then there's also the bad customer service and those people who feel entitled that because they're in business that you should should support them and they're not giving quality merchandise or quality service you know treat them accordingly and stuff and to those people who are providing bad customer service uh, I think you need to change your attitude. I think you should provide the best, best customer service in order to get people to buy your merchandise and thing. People will buy things because that's how things are. But let me tell you, share this with you all that I didn't share. I bought some shoes offline about two years ago. I never got the shoes back. I never got the shoes back, y'all. 
It was a designer this person in Tennessee. They designed shoes and all of that stuff. Then he tried to tell me the merchants holding the money up and everything. That's terrible customer service. Of course, I reported them or I wrote a uh, complaint on them and stuff. Took 200 and something dollars of my money and you're trying to support them for the work they do and you don't get anything back. So with, with that, what I said is karma will come. I'm not worried about them because guess what? Even if their business is thriving or was thriving, God take care of his people and I'm one of his people. So I know he's going to take care of me. And that person will one day somehow catch the wrath of God because I leave things to that because you get to a point in life where you shouldn't stress over things that are out of your control and you just have to move on. You got to take it as a loss. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. I mean, I could have used that money to buy some other shoes or some other things, but what it is that two years ago, I ain't never get my money back. So it's unfortunate, but be careful when you're out here buying people's products and stuff too, because not only do they provide bad customer service, but they also not providing the merchandise. So again, I want to thank you all for checking out real estate, real life, real talk and real live with Damon, the agent each and every Friday at 12 noon. Please again, make sure you check out my social media platforms, subscribe to my YouTube, and I will see you all next week. Have a great weekend, everyone.